Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back. I'll fight to my last breath! I smell a leak. I Nay, do one thing came est. Left, right, left, right. Listen to me, old lady. We must trust each other. The chase is on! Nothing personal, I assure you. Thing about slings, they hide well. Oh. Kay Admiral and Shay. This harvest will be reaping black clad heads. Blood and neck ends. Similian Vat. <laughs> My spirit's willing and how, but these damn boots are killing me. Look what the wear cat dragged in. Prepare to fight, if you've any honor. As you can see, this new Mives ability is pretty OP from the previous episode. It also has less cooldown thanks to the Lyrian banner. You'll regret your mum ever squirted you out. Now we can use it again. <laughs> and with its slow cooldown, we also trigger the Nilth Guardians, we trigger the Scythemen. This is Elven Land, Dwar, upon which your kind dies. Come out, man.
Meave was discussing some matter with Gascon when a scout approached. His blood-streaked uniform revealed the matter to be urgent, so the Queen cut short her conversation and requested a report. We were scouting, milady, and we found a cave entrance. Small scattering of elves guarding it, but we took them right out. Hmm. Gascon scratched his chin. I'd wager ten Novigrad crowns there are more Scoyatels squirreled away inside. We strike before they know we've snuffed out their guards. We might well catch them by surprise. But we must act quickly. Then let us act. Gather some men and prepare them for an attack. But keep quiet. The Lyrians crept into the cave. They moved carefully, noiselessly even, avoiding notice for quite a while. Nevertheless, elven warriors soon came pouring out of a side cavern. One of your teeth. <laughs> I shall not fail. Enough, chit chat. Draw your weapon. This could hurt. down must be something of value to them here getting to work watch your heads <laughs> What do you want of me? Catch! We ought to help one or the other. <laughs> Nay, Duan Vekamest. Now since the fire is in the second row, I can kick all of the cards from the first row with me. Land, Dwan, upon which your kind dies. <laughs> and just when you thought things were about to get dull. to help one or the other.
Oh my. This artist will be reaping black clad heads. Death awaits us all. The white of an eye from our full league away. Death to old one. <laughs> oh, my little day. Discipline shall bring us victory! Your tricks will not save you, Dwar. They resisted to the very end. When the Lyrians broke the Elven ranks, Meave was convinced their foe would retreat and regroup. But to her surprise, the Scoia'tael fought to the bitter end. She concluded there must have been something truly valuable hidden in that cave. As Meave entered the next chamber, her nose caught the stink of blood, pus, and urine. Then she understood. The elves were using the cave as a field hospital. Wounded fighters lay by the cavern walls. They made no attempt to defend themselves, nor to beg, nor to make peace with the gods. They merely watched the Lyrians calmly, with stark contempt. Milady, whispered Rayla. You saw what the Scoia'tael are capable of. What they do to humans, they would have no mercy for... Raynard, usually calm, could not hold back and cut Raylor off. What, pray, do you suggest? That we murder the wounded? The warrior responded in a whisper, slowly emphasizing her words. I suggest you leave. Leave me and my men. We'll take care of the rest. Okay, so this is another place where you need to choose whether to be soft towards the Skyatel or not. So this is one of the three places where you need to make a choice for Black Rayla. You need to listen to her two out of three times. And of course, I'm not gonna slaughter the Squatel. Meave looked the warrior in the eyes and was terrified by what she saw. No, Rayla. We shall not touch them. Do you understand? Rayla was quiet for a long moment. Finally... She nodded and left the cave. Raynard followed her with his gaze, hand on hilt. Raynard, listen to me. You are to keep a close watch on Rayla until we are at least a day's ride from this cave. If she separates from the column, if she tries to double back, I wish to hear about it. Do you understand? Raynard nodded. Despite the day's victory, they left the cave in a somber mood.
Okay, so this one heals an ally and gives it strength by 10. While this one only boosts a unit. So I'm gonna remove this one and take this one. Now there is one more thing with Black Rayla, but I'm gonna talk about that later. Since I don't wanna spoil anything. Have... have we not passed this way before? Scouts say no, Your Grace. They mark the trees. Elves could have erased the marks, or left new ones where we've yet to tread. Best to follow the sun. Only way not to lose your bearings. Okay, this is another place where we can send Aik or else we would lose 8 men. Meave was riding at the head of the caravan when Black Rayla rode up and leaned towards her. She spoke in a whisper, a hand shielding her mouth. Your Grace, I have something important to tell you. Yet you can't show anything to miss. Look straight ahead. Make no sudden moves. Meave nodded slightly and waited for her to continue. Scoyatel scouts in the woods, watching us. Eldane's near here somewhere, preparing his attack. So what do you propose? Asked the Queen, her gaze fixed on the road ahead. Let him catch us out in the open. We're sitting ducks. But there are ruins nearby, an elven cemetery. We can find cover behind its walls. Meave was accustomed to discussing important decisions with all her advisors. But she knew there was no time for consultation now. She had to trust Black Rayla's advice, and so without further delay, issued the appropriate orders. Meave's retinue reached the cemetery before dusk. Her soldiers knocked down the marble statuary and piled them into barricades, while scouts took up positions outside the walls to watch for the foe's approach. When the sun set, the woods exhaled the heat of the day, and a thick fog soon arose. Out of the mist stepped Reynard's scouts, bound and pushed forward by elves. One of the Scoyatel, a sturdy elf with long hair, stood by the cemetery wall and cried, I am Eldane. I would speak to Meave. I am she. Speak. Cadmil and Kedva Genved, Rena. This place is of great import to us, the Enshe. I would tell you of its monuments, of the weeping Ensevern, carved by three generations of sculptors, or of the alabaster relief of King Kellad, so beautiful even the birds would gather to admire it. But I see your men have found our memorials, and, in the way of Dwan, destroyed them without a second thought. I cannot say this comes as a surprise. You've already shown the gods molded you from the basest of matter. Get to the point, Eldane. So I shall. As you certainly know, the necropolis is surrounded. Soon, there shall be a battle. But, 
It is unseemly to fight in a cemetery. So I ask you to come out into the open. And surrender our tactical advantage. I suspected a matter so impractical as respecting the dead would mean nothing to you, Duan. So I submit one more argument. The lives of the soldiers you sent to spy. If you leave the cemetery, I shall set them free. They will fight at your side. If not, I shall kill them, here and now. Milady, don't listen to him. He can't be trusted. Rayla, those are good men. Fabian, Gerrit, Matthias, they've served me for a decade. They'd crawl through seven hells for their queen. They do not deserve such a death. I accept your conditions. Your grace, I beg you. Soldiers! We march into the field! Eldane clasped his hands in thanks. Then, in a swift, almost careless movement, slit the throat of the scout standing nearest to him. You should have listened to Rayla, your grace. We elves truly cannot be trusted. Spala! <clears throat> I warned you, now we've lost the advantage. Uh. I'm sorry, Your Grace. I take full responsibility. For Demavend! Serves a purpose. God bless it. My breastplate chase. I was hoping you'd say that. An army's a waste of time for one like me. Listen to me, old lady. Discipline shall bring us victory. <laughs> this harvest will be reaping black clad heads. My spirit's willing, and how the these damn boots are killing me. Got business for me? There's a time to reap, a time to sow, and a time to die. None shall tread on us! By the way, we have upgraded our Stray's Bombers, you see now that they have a plus, and now the fire has 66 chance percent to deal 2 damage. Hey. Off to the front yet again.
Look what the werecat dragged in. Coin never stinks, no matter how rank the pouch. Now we will see who is weak. to them to a man! <laughs> Peace with humans? Advise us! Blacker! Beaner! After a long, bloody battle, Eldane's unit was destroyed, and Eldane himself sat at Meave's feet, defeated and dying. To die in a cemetery. Something amusing in it, wouldn't you say? I am surprised you are in the mood for humor. All my tears I shed years ago. My family killed in a massacre aimed at eradicating our race. Senseless. Utterly senseless. Reyna, we have lost. Me, my Scoia'tael, the Enche. We shall vanish from this earth. Your grandchildren will know us in fairy tales only. I know I deceived you, but... Lay my bones to rest in a grave. Let me part this world with dignity. Eger Dregared. Oh, please. How dare he? Look, he laughs, Your Grace. This dog should rot in an open field. Need I mention the willow? The men he strung from it? The men he burned alive? And this is the third and final choice, where you need to choose whether to keep the Black Rayla or not. So... So be it. I shall lay you in a tomb. Your Grace! How can you justify this? A cutthroat! A murderer! As are you, Rayla. As am I. For centuries we fight, kill one another, shed blood for bloodshed, attack and counter-attack, each act more cruel and bloody than the last. The cycle ends now. What was done I cannot undo, but I can do this. Grant a dying soul dignity. Thank you. Vathia, Rina. Black Rayla stormed off, shoving her way through the gathered men. Me paid her no heed. The soldiers laid Eldane's remains in an empty crypt. The rest of the Scoia'tael they buried in a pit near the edge of the woods. The next morning, at dawn's first light, the Lyrians marched off, eager to leave the Moulderwood behind.
Now let's see what did we get. There it is. By the way, when you upgrade something in your workshop, you can actually see how camp is evolving, which is a nice cool detail. Oh, at last. I'd begun to think this wood had no end. And I thought bandits knew their way around a wood. We do. Around those not brimming with elves armed to teeth. Without hesitation, as you command. You can try to win them all, but you won't. Can't take it anymore. The burning fields and orchards spewed thick black smoke, turning day into darkest night. Riding in the middle of her caravan, Meave could see neither its head nor its rear. Reynard ordered the men to keep formation and march in silence. Eyes open, fore and aft. The foe might well use these conditions to spring a trap. When a scout's shrill horn cut through the silence, Meave immediately galloped to the front of the column. She found herself in a pile of red-hot coals that had once been peasants' huts. What the devil happened here? Bodies lay amid the ashes. Barefoot men in nightshirts as if caught in their sleep. Meave deemed them yet more victims of the black-clad invaders. 
But Gascon had another interpretation. Look at the arrows. Imperial issue. Not hardly. Nor are they the type the Scoyatel favor. And the tracks in the mud, the attackers fought not in formation, but man to man. Bandits. It must have been. Raynard, standing next to him, nodded in agreement. Gascon can be relied on here. After all, he knows of what he speaks. An uncomfortable silence fell over the group, ending only when Meave ordered the scouts to determine the direction of the bandits' tracks. They returned to report the killers were hiding somewhere to the north. I'm going no further, and I'd advise you to do the same. Bandits took the fort to the north. Was nearly home. Nearly with my dear wife. Go to Edurn, they said. You'll sell it a profit, they said. Was nearly home. Nearly with my dear wife. I'm going no further, and I'd advise you to do the same. Bandits took the fort to the north. Go to Edurn, they said. You'll sell it a profit, they said. Another dead end. How the demons do I get out of here? Do I quit this place for good? Cursed land. Nothing but corpses and ash. Corpses and ash, far as the eye can see. Smoke everywhere. Billows of it. Stings your eyes and scratches at your throat. Cursed land. Nothing but corpses and ash. Corpses and ash, far as the eye can see. Cursed land. Nothing but corpses and ash. Corpses and ash, far as the eye can see. The scouts reported the bandits who attacked the village that night now occupied a fort the Adernians had hastily abandoned during their retreat. They left crossbows, arbalists, ballistae. The bandits are armed to the teeth. What's more, according to the local folk, they had a witch among them. In light of these reports, Meave's advisors debated whether it was worth risking a fight with the brigands. Let's call it as it is, Gascon said. The game's not worth the candle. Game, Rayla said, struggling to swallow her anger. They slaughtered an entire village. We cannot let them get away. The stage seemed set for a long debate, when Meave pounded her fist on the table. I am a queen, for God's sakes. I shall not cower before common rogues, even if the entire conclave of mages stands with them. Reynard, have the men prepare their arms. Reynard saluted and left the tent. If one had seen him then, he would have sworn the grizzled soldier smiled to himself, beaming with pride in his ruler. Leads us to our surrender while you can. For them event. Your Grace, I saw flashes of light inside the fort. Don't shake that!
Fear not. We shall achieve our goal. This could hurt. Left, right, left, right. We must find a gap in the fortifications. Her Majesty is exceptional. My spirit's willing and how, but these damn boots are killing me. Coin never stinks, no matter how rank the pouch. There's a time to reap, a time to sow. You can try to win them all, but you won't. Ah, should have listened to me, old lady. Got any vettles? Hungry like a wolf, I am. This harvest will be reaping black clad heads. Take it anymore. What do you want of me? Rah! Shice in tray! Did you hear that? A kind of incantation. Something's not right. They should be dead with those wounds. Try to win them all, but you won't. Any vettles? Hungry like a wolf, I am. The fort is ours, Your Grace. They battled long and hard to take the fort. Meave could have sworn she saw bandits stalking its ramparts. Bandits who moments before had taken a bolt to the head. By all rights, a mortal wound. What the devil is going on here? She swore as she took cover behind her shield. The secret was unraveled only after the battle's conclusion. Meave's soldiers dragged before her a grey-haired woman in coloured robes. The aura radiating from her left no doubt. They had fought a sorceress. It was her healing spells that enabled the bandits to hold off their attack for so long. What is your name, sorceress? Ishbel of Tretagor. I take it you did not keep company with bandits willingly? Not at all. They kidnapped me and forced me to aid them. Forced? I do not understand. As a woman fluent in the arcana of magic, you could have freed yourself with little effort. True. I could have. But I would have had to kill, 
and I swore never to use my talents to harm another. Not even in self-defense? Not even then. Then you live in truly unfortunate times. War rages all around. You cannot hide from it. So be it. Then I must entrust myself to the care of the gods. Or a passing queen. You stand before me, by divine right, ruler of Lyria and Rivia. We seek the lord of these lands, Demavend. Oh, forgive me for not recognizing you, your grace. You do not look like a ruler, more like a mercenary. Nor do you look like a sorceress. True, milady. Forgive me. I meant no offense. I accept your apology, and would gladly welcome you into our ranks. Truth be told, a skilled worker of magic would prove most useful to us. Thank you, my lady. But you must know, an army is no place for me. Should you wish it not, you needn't fight. We have many civilians among our ranks who... Who do their part in the slaughter. Indirect guilt is enough. My soldiers do not slaughter, they fight. Lofty words, but the result is the same. Piles of corpses. Well, a bandit I am not. I shall not force you. Reynard, prepare the men to march on. Of course, but if I may, perhaps Xavier might have a look at the war machines we captured. He may find some parts of use. Me followed Reynard's suggestion. Xavier went to work. Yes, Your Grace. God, what happened to him? He was in Rosberg when the stronghold fell. Nearly burned alive. How... How are you healing him? The medics recommended regular poultices of dog's tallow. But whether they've any effect... Of course they've no effect. For such wounds. How he must suffer! In the day he reveals nothing. But at night one awakes to hear him sob with pain. You see? I need healers. I shall go with you. But never shall I use magic to take a life. Do I make myself clear? Yes, you have put it quite plain, and rather bluntly. Forgive me, Your Grace. It has been long since I played the host. I forget the custom. Your spells mean more to me than your manners. Welcome to our ranks, Isbel. Isbel sat in one of their wagons and shut her tired eyes. Her long grey hair seemed to flutter ever so slightly, though there was neither wind nor breeze. Okay, so we got Isbel. She is an amazing healer. Mom, it's good you're here. We ought to speak. Yes? Concerning what? I've spent time with your troops, dressing their wounds, treating them. They respect you greatly, would follow you into any fire, any flood. Happy to hear it. They're good folk, one and all. Yes, precisely. In fact, too good to die in a senseless war. 
Not certain I understand. The Imperial Army's enormous. Just how enormous we know, both. Had you all the Norse kings at your side, victory would still be unsure. Yet you fight alone. Know well you cannot rely on them. Agreed. Nilfgaard's far better equipped and greatly outnumbers us. Yet, though try, they cannot be everywhere at once. They stretch their forces thin, too thin. An error I aim to exploit. You may be right. I hope you are. The lives of those you lead depend on it. Hmm. You're proud, persistent, and sure of yourself. Just as I was at your age. It may work in your favor. Only time can tell. Meanwhile, how might I help? You're no village witch, no healer. That much is clear. But nor do you look like our northern sorceresses. Hmm. I use no glamour, true. I've come to feel a body must age, and honestly so, as nature intended, as is the order of things. You sound much like a druid driveling on about balance, harmony, the good that is rot. Rather poor, their reputation, druids. Yet they're in the right in this regard, I believe. Defy nature's laws, and nothing good can come of it. Is that also why you wear no shoes? Ha! Ah, no. I simply like to feel the grass between my toes, the sand, the mud. You must try it sometime. Hmm. I shall think on it. Thank you, Isabel. Duty calls. I must go. Of course. Should you need me, I'll be here. Now, before we continue, I just want to mention that Isbel will not like you if you kill someone who is innocent. So, if you try to keep Rayla, then let's say later she will kill someone who is innocent, if you manage to keep her. And if she kills the innocent people and you say, hey, it's fine, no worries, then this lady will leave your army. So you can prevent that by not doing that side quest. Or simply you're gonna have to choose between these two ladies. But she's not gonna leave you only because of Black Rayla. She can also leave you if you make some bad choices. of it stings your eyes uh, smoke everywhere but also of it stings your eyes and scratches at your throat. was nearly home nearly with my dear wife was nearly home nearly with my dear wife was nearly home nearly with my dear wife The ruins still smolder. Nilfgaard passed not long afore. They must be close. No doubt they already knock at Aldersburg's gate. We must make haste. 
brave warriors fled so fast you didn't manage to pack. Beautiful sword. <laughs> Not a scratch on it. Our army showed well in the parade, but when it came down to it, yeah. it's of no real use to me. Take it if you'd like. Left in the fields, it'll go to waste. Brave warriors. Beautiful Great. Beaut Our army showed well in the parade. When it came down to it... Give me a time. Abolist to your command. Pissing in the moat? Oh, you're dead. Nice, we found a key. And there's the chest already. And we will continue this in the next episode, so if you liked this one give it a like, dislike if you think it sucked, and see you next time. Thank you.